A lot of people think the Chicago Cubs need a superstar in 2023. If not Pete Alonzo, then who? You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Please support the show by following on your preferred audio platform, and you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Well, today we're Locked On Juan Soto, as the Padres trading their star player this winter is a real possibility. Padres president of baseball ops, A.J. Preller, did not decline they would sell as their franchise is in flux. With a surprising losing campaign in 2023, plus trouble on the business side. Soto is entering his final year of team control, projected to make $33 million in arbitration. A superstar talent. A superstar talent, Sam. The Cubs really need entering 2024 and beyond. So let's start by, let's start by Matt. You know, do we want to address, you know, why we're talking about Juan Soto? I mean, it's not like we're just bringing this up out of the blue. I think you and I were the first ones to do a show. I think we did a show of it. Mid-July. Yeah, mid-July. It was a fit that made sense. And now there's been a little bit of smoke and fire um, around that. But look. Yeah, the Padres basically can't afford him. Right. The Padres probably cannot afford to extend him. They could use the prospect capital in return. They did not have a very good year this year. And the Cubs are one of the teams that could afford him in in an extension and trade for him. Um, This is one of those trades, right? It's a trade pending an extension. You do not make this trade if you cannot extend Juan Soto. What does extending Juan Soto look like? Well, think about Cody Bellinger and then add – about another 100, 150 M's right. because, because why? Well, Juan Soto's younger. He has the pedigree. He's never had a bad year in the big leagues. This was probably the worst he's ever been. Uh, like, let's just, t- to quantify how good Juan Soto is as a hitter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some statistics. He had, I would say, a down year by his standards, right? right, he, hit the, right. He, hit the ball, he hit the ball on the ground a lot. He didn't hit for much power, right? Cody Bellinger's final season, or th- this last year, was a great year. He batted 307. He had uh, 26 home runs with an 881 OPS. Juan Soto had a 930 OPS and 35 home runs. And this was, like we said, this, th- this was his floor. This is the worst version of Juan Soto. The Cubs, if the Cubs were to trade for Juan Soto, I'm not sure what that would look like. It would obviously cost more than Pete Alonso. Where does he play in the outfield? You probably have to attach an Ian Happ or a Seiya Suzuki in that deal or assume that you don't re-sign Bellinger. Uh, but I don't think this deal makes sense without Bellinger. I think you want those two together. Um, and you, you basically, in my opinion, have the best offensive talent in baseball. If you were to tell me right. who the who the most talented offensive player is in the game today, and, and, and I would have to project their stats just offensively over the next 10 years, I would pick Juan Soto. When he is right, if he could get himself consistently hitting the ball in the air again, he has the ability to hit about 340, 350 with an on-base in the high fours, low fives, and he could hit 45, 50 home runs. Like he, he, he is the total Great. package. He, he, he walks a ton. He could put the ball in play. The, the whole question with him is, is, is why was his ground ball rate so high this year, and can he fix that? Now, can the Cubs trade for him? Of course they could. The question is, will that include a PCA? Will that include a, a Cade Horton? And are you willing to give him 350 to 400 M's in, in an extension? I personally believe if you're really going for broke and you want to win a World Series in the next two, three years, this is the guy you target. Absolutely. There's there's only three names that I am able to produce in the last five years who are superstars in their own tier. Mike Trout, Aaron Judge, Juan Soto. That's yeah, the list. I think you're right. And this past year, he still put up 
great numbers. He he's yeah. a model of consistency, yep. not only from year to year, but also week by week. We did this back in mid July. I did it again with with two more plus months of information from from this past season. Rarely do you find a stretch where Soto is cold or he's in yeah. a slump. I, I had April. trouble. I Just had trouble April. finding that the last five years. Yep, couldn't find it, and. I don't have a lineup projection for you. I know that's going to surprise some. I don't have a position locked in for him. I don't have a projected trade. But I know the Cubs need a star, and Soto possibly playing on the north side excites me the most right now, even more than Alonzo, which I think is a little more likely. Yep. And Otani's a free agent this offseason. Yeah. And you might say this is a pipe dream. But last week, Bleacher Nation's Michael Cerami reported this, Sam, quote, I've heard from multiple sources that the Cubs' interest in Juan Soto this offseason is real. That doesn't mean the Cubs will get a trade done. Lots of teams should have real interest. But the Padres' ability to shed payroll while adding a great return and the fit for the, sh- and the, fit for the Cubs are both unmistakable, close quote. And, folks, that is a legit report. Um, Cerami this past summer reported the Candelario trade first and last December had the Swanson signing. So I think there's something there and it it is exciting to, to ponder. And even if there's a combination of major league pieces and, and a PCA or whomever, it, it does at some point, especially with a looming extension, it takes what it takes. This is the type of player that exactly is that. You take what it takes. Man, I'm going to read you some stats for Juan Soto for his career. Okay. He just finished his sixth major league season. Right. He is only 24 years old. Say that one more time. He just finished his sixth major league season. He's under 24. He's technically not even in the prime of his career yet. He has a career OPS of 946. He has more walks than strikeouts for his career. 640 walks, 577 strikeouts. His average major league season is 284, 421, 524, 946 with uh, 33 home runs and 100 RBIs, and, he, and, he, and he's just turned 24. I mean, the, the best version of him is yet to be seen, you'd think, and he's the exact player. He Juan Soto is the exact player, Matt, when you give out these ridiculous contracts, right? Mm -hmm. Because in baseball, they are ridiculous because not one player can help you win that much. Right. He's the guy you don't feel bad about giving it to because it's, it's always about the floor and ceiling. His floor is extremely high. The worst version of Juan Soto is an all-star caliber player. So you feel safe in that. And his ceiling, as Michael Jordan would say, is through the roof, (laughs) Right. right? I mean, he, At his very worst, he's an all-star. At his very best, he's by far the best player offensively in the league. So this is a guy that you trade for and that you give the keys to. And he is a guy that I think would benefit. There's certain guys, and Pete Alonso is another one. There's certain guys that are made for the big stage and the big market and the bright lights. Totally, totally. And there's there's certain guys that are meant to play in Kansas City in Detroit. Mm-hmm. And, and and Juan Soto is a guy that I could just see flourishing at Wrigley Field in Chicago. I mean, his playoff numbers are basically exactly like his uh, his regular numbers, and at just 20 years old, I mean, what he did in the World Series, three home runs, 333 average. I mean, the guy, the guy just oozes superstar. The way he carries himself, the way he take, p- takes pitches. And look, you know, I, I've been underwhelmed by his last two seasons because I want him – I think he's as talented of a young hitter as I've ever seen. And so I want him to take that jump. I think it's ridiculous that he's had back-to-back seasons where he's nowhere near in the MVP conversation. But my money's telling me, my gut, my head, my heart are telling me that that's coming. And and why not have it be, you know, over on Clark and Addison and I ain't talking crumble cookie. Absolutely. And if you haven't checked out our Monday episode, please do that. As uh, we talked all things Tom Ricketts from – following his letter uh, last week. and Our episodes are doing well in the offseason so far by comparison. We're starting, you know, people are watching, so good for them. 
Well, and I was doing some things the other day where I was going back basically a year ago. And it's just really cool to see. Yeah, is it, uh, yeah, there's growth, I'm assuming. I mean, it's like three-digit views, two-digit likes. Yeah, yeah. 15 comments. That was only a year ago, not even. Right, this is what the Phillies do when they hit a homer. Uh, so I appreciate everybody. Uh, yeah. No, seriously. No, I know that. There's some great comments. Uh, no, we had a lot of comments today. Phenomenal for engagement. Episode. Yeah. Please keep it up. I really appreciate it. Exciting things on the way, hopefully. And uh, it's exciting to talk about Juan Soto. I mean, imagine the live show. Oh. If they trade for this brother this <laughs> December, can you imagine at the winter meetings, dude? The winter meetings? I can't say that, dude. Could you imagine? Well, Matt Eberflus thinks Fields might, you know, we'll see on Friday where he's at. So, Yeah, what's with that? No, I, I, I tweeted out today on my account at Sam Olber. You can follow me there. Uh, that, that the Eberflus uh, interview today on Waddle and Sylvie was one of the more embarrassing moments for the Bears organization. I mean, the guy, it, it's, it's no different than you or I just not showing up to work tomorrow. I mean, it's just, it's really appalling. It's bad. One thing I did want to follow up on, so you would you would not consider making a trade if no extension. Is that did I catch that correctly? Yes. Okay. Unless unless you could get by with a you know a non PCA non cost was lower. Yeah, I mean if you could avoid giving up PCA and Horton, um, maybe for a year, but I still don't think it's worth it, man. Um, I okay. think you, you trade for Juan Soto. You, 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 you wrap up Juan Soto. Yeah, I would, I would think so. I would think so. Uh, the position that Soto plays the outfield is going to get graded first as we begin our series on Cubs position group grades. We do that coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs makes you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. They fit way better than regular shorts. They're made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs also uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long bird dogs are functional for any occasion golfing going on a date an evening out a, a poolside hangout a workout taking a walk around the block going to work so many different things you could do in your bird dogs go to birddogs.com slash locked on mlb or enter promo code locked on mlb at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order they are the king of swag okay here is my Yeti for the first time in a while. Got replaced by the, the mason jar. I'm bringing back the Yeti. That was a bit of swag they sent me. That was a while ago. And then over the summer, the, the, the white tech hat, which I wore at the Cubs 5K a few weeks ago, uh, watching Frank Cozy run um, in an insanely good time. And That's so your dad. Right now, you can get a – Free water bottle. Birddogs.com slash locked on MLB with a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Ian Happ, Seiya Suzuki, Cody Bellinger, and Mike Talkman logged the most time in the outfield for the Cubs in 2023. Cameo appearances from Nelson Velazquez, Alexander Canario, and Pete. Pro Armstrong. There was a couple other dudes that played in the outfield, but are not officially listed there. Like like Morrell, like, Manc like Mancini, Morell, Master Boney, Mancini. Uh, they were listed officially as outfielders, DHs, or uh, first basemen. All right, so we're going to do the position grades and reviews differently from last year. If you were with us about a year ago, we're going to do it. Instead of individually, we are going to do it by group and then break down the individuals uh, if and when we see fit. So, Sam, thoughts on that outfield group so uh, in 2023? Because really, it was just those four guys. So, I'm, I'm grading the outfield as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Hap, Suzuki, Bellinger, and Talkman. 
Well, okay. So let me talk this out. It is, it is such an interesting grade to give because Suzuki was awful for the mo- for the first four months of the season, basically, and then the last two months he was, you know, Barry Bonds. Hap was just so quietly eh, the whole year. Right. Um, Talkman was outstanding from when he came up all the way through August, and then he was really quiet in September. That's pretty much the three, really. Um, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grade them in my head individually and then give an average grade. Cool. So I will say I'll give the outfield a B minus. Okay. Um, do you want me to elaborate on individuals or is this? Kinda... Yeah, I, I, I think you did a nice job there. I, I, uh, I think it is one of the more easy groups to grade. I, I would give them a a B. Yeah, I was thinking about B plus as a matter of fact. So, so let me take you through mine. Yeah, Suzuki gets a B. I think Talkman's in the high B range considering his expect. Wait, is Bellinger not a part of that? He is. Oh, he is. Okay, I didn't even say Bellinger out loud. You're right. It's a flat B. For okay, me. because Bell Bellinger Bellinger's an A. Suzuki's a B. Uh, um. Talkman, I think, is in the high B range, and then Haps a C. Okay, Haps a C. It, it, it's a B. You're right. It's a B B plus. I I, I was thinking Bellinger is a first baseman. No, I that. listed him a few different times. No, sorry about that. I, I I. It's just so hard to give him more than a B though, because outside it of is Be- for some reason, because right? outside of Bellinger, it was really Bellinger and Talkman were great, and then like Suzuki's end of the year numbers are really B plus A minus. But it's because he really didn't do anything for three months. Uh, and then, and look, I know that all those people out there, they're going to say, hey, Hap had this better than last year and this. It wasn't good enough, folks. It wasn't good enough. And I've already talked about him more than I'd like to all offseason. Yeah. Did you say that publicly that you didn't you, you didn't want to talk about him? Yeah, you did. That was quite a statement. I'm drinking a lot of uh, Gatorade on this show today because I'm really thirsty. Yeah, rarely I don't have any water by me. First time in about 300 episodes. So I think this is a great I think this is a good way to do it by 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 position group and I would give them well, a sure. B. Sure. Yeah, that was a decision I made as the producer and uh B is in boy. You know, I I think that Talkman provided a, a much needed boost. One of my biggest what ifs of the year. Oh, uh, so if he Talkman started, started opening on it. March 30th, not started just was on the roster. And Bellinger missed exactly 30 games. Um, or he missed, he was unavailable for 30 games. Still produced a unbelievable year. Yep. Saya shows up from August 9th on. And I do think at some point, or maybe we are just <laughs> resigned to our fate, but you know, what what is the expectation? Like what I would love to know what's in the Ivy system, which is the Cubs computer system. What is in there on half? <laughs> like, what does Ivy spit back? Because I feel like it should be more. You feel like it should be more. We see the the discourse out there. I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly. He needs what to be. step up. It should be the same as Suzuki. It's a, you know he should be hitting. In that I always viewed them as similar too. Two seventies, twenty five to thirty OPS in the mid to high eights, just like okay. Suzuki basically did that this year. Suzuki ended up in the two eighties OPS in the mid to high eights. That Hap should be there. Hap and Suzuki are. And Suzuki could even be better. Of course, pending trade. We of course know Bellinger is a free agent. Mike Talkman under team control, Sam. Do you think he returns to the roster? And if yes. so, in what role? I think I think his ideal role for this team were to be on this roster as a fourth outfielder. That'd be great. And a, and a late game clutch pinch hitter. The Cubs don't have that much to do on their bench if they don't want for 24 already. Right. Talkman, Amaya, Mastroboni, and, and somebody else, but there's internal people already. Right. Morel. Uh, Madrigal. Right. Wisdom. Well, okay. All right. Enough. So, right. you know, there's a lot of options there. Yeah. Uh, oh, you don't think Wisdom's coming back? No. I don't. Okay. Well, he's under team control. So. Yeah. Well, so am I. 
<laughs> Coming up next, we get into some prospects updates. Uh-oh. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, which right now is focused on baseball. Okay, October baseball is back, and you can make your postseason debut with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We are so overjoyed by this partnership with FanDuel. We have been since they debuted earlier this year with Locked On and here at Locked On Cubs. Every time we could talk about FanDuel, we do that. If you join right now, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. You can do that by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On, and then you create your new account. And you can get in on the baseball action. Bet on everything from strikeouts to home runs to who will win the game. And if you don't want to wait the entire game to get a win, predict what will happen at bat to at bat with quick bets. Head on over to FanDuel.com slash Locked On right now. Step up to the plate this postseason with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network and Major League Baseball. The prospects list are starting. And Just Baseball updated theirs on Monday, Sam. They have five Ooh. Cubs players in the top. What? What? Which? Sorry. What outlet? This outlet is called Just Baseball. Oh, sorry. Okay. I love that. I love that. Well, I just, you know, I, 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 this is part of my job, and so I'd like to know who it is. I <laughs> haven't heard really much of that. Oh, so. okay. All right. they, I had no disrespect to just baseball if they're watching, obviously. Obviously, I, I must have missed on that. Pete Crow Armstrong is 18th. Kate Horton, 21. Owen Casey, 29. Kevin Alcantara, 46. Matt Shaw, 51. That's five Cubs in the top 51. Yeah. And I was trying to find Arizona Fall League stats for the life of me earlier Monday, and I couldn't find those. Alcantara, it, Triantos, and others are playing right now in AZ. I hope to have those for you at some point. To to loop this episode together, can you please, and I'm sorry, I know, can you rename that, uh, the, the, the top 51 according to Just Baseball, please? PCA, 18. Yep. Horton, 50, uh, Horton 21. Yep. Casey, 29. Yep. Alcantara, 46, and Shaw, 51. When you look at Casey and Alcantara and Shaw and Triantos and Canario, like there are so many outfits. Like if you're going to trade for Juan Soto, let's say, right. you have to include a couple of those guys. They're, they're, they're going to be blocked anyway. Well, you're certainly willing to, or you should be. So I guess the point I'm trying to make, because I already can read the comments now, why are you giving up all the farm for one year of Juan Soto? Well, do you think you can win the World Series in 2024? Well, well, and, and that would it be a be, reason. And it wouldn't be for one year because there's crumble cookies opening up. They got money to spend. And that bit's not funny. I'm not doing it anymore. Okay, and, yeah. uh, you used it earlier today. Already. No, it's not funny. You haven't laughed either time. So uh, uh, I'm going to go to a different bit. Maybe it's better. I think you like the Starbucks bit better. <laughs> um, well, the I, area around the park, I have to admit, is really nice. Oh, great. So use the revenue from that to, to extend Juan Soto. And if you extend Juan Soto, then all these great outfielders, I know Shaw can play infield too, but <laughs> you know what I mean? The point is, is the Cubs have the resources. They have the Of prospect. course they have the of course they have the resources. No. <laughs> I don't well, – put your headphone back on. Put your headphone back on and shave while you're at it. Uh, 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 I'm talking about the prospect capital to make a trade like that. And then they have the financial capital. Why are you looking at me like that? Hotel in, Zachary. And in order to extend those guys. Smoke Daddy, Big Star Taco. You know, the Phillies and Rangers are going to be playing in the World Series, and those two teams aren't afraid to spend. <laughs> oh, well, we could talk about that for hours. Harper, 300 plus. <laughs> Turner, 300 plus. <laughs> Castellano. Simeon. Oh, 300, yeah. And, and one of those guys, one of those guys that got a lot of money for the Rangers hasn't even pitched all year, DeGrom. Yeah, it's crazy. He actually got less than two hundo. 
No, I know, but he got paid a lot. Which uh, no, 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 I shouldn't be drinking drinking as much, uh, uh, hydrating as much on the show. All right, well, that's going to be our Tuesday program, <laughs> pretty much. You know, I... uh, we're going to continue position group grades Wednesday. And how much money do the Cubs have to spend? And maybe it should be how much do they have to spend to win? Uh, we're gonna can talk I say about something? Yeah. Can I say something before we get off the air? I know, I know you hate when I do that, but you made a great point on today's show, and 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 we'll pause this and we'll talk about it on a different episode. So this is just okay. a little little food for thought for all of our, all of our beautiful listeners. The Cubs won eighty three games this year. The Cubs, for an extended period of time on the IL, not at all at the same time. Bellinger, Steele, Swanson, Horner, Suzuki. Mm. Yeah, you're and, five and, best and, players. And everyone says, oh, everybody has injuries. Well, not everybody has their five best guys. And I'll lie. Not everybody has six Your of their top main, six. Who's the only main, main guy that didn't hit the IL for the Cubs this year was Hap and yeah. Gomes. And Strowman, you could throw on the IL too. I mean, like people say, oh, everyone yeah. deals with injuries. How many teams, like the Braves, won 100 or whatever games? Their guys stayed relatively healthy. They did. They had, they had only 80 lineups. Seven of their main guys were all on the IL. Like this team has to stay healthy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's something that. Yeah. I, it's whatever... a little food for a little food for thought. And I fasted today. And so <laughs> I think that. You know, and I and I tend for whatever reason as a fan not to it's easy to forget that look baseball. at that. Yeah. I think because I want to avoid the pain of it. No, I don't um, think it's that painful because I don't know. You, but it, I it's but just I know re- there's injuries in sports. But it's just a reminder that the Cubs had like all their best guys missed time. Yeah. Right. All of them. Yeah, it's it's an important reminder for sure. Thank you so much for checking out this edition of Locked On Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. We'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube as we make the push to 7,000 subs and smash the like button for the algorithm. Shout out to the audio peeps on Apple, Spotify, Sirius XM, and more. Another fun show. We'll be back on Wednesday. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This This is Locked Locked on Cubs. Cubs.